Hi, I'm Allie Roberts here with Starting Line Products, and today we're going to be showing you how to install our Outlaw Twin Pipes. First, remove the hood, side panels, stock pipe, silencer, and spare belt holder. Once the stock pipe set is removed, use a T40 Torx and a 13mm wrench to remove the recoil roller. This will not be reinstalled. Failure to remove the recoil roller may cause the recoil rope to melt. During this process, make sure to leave the stock rubber isolator on the bulkhead support. Next, remove OEM nose cone block off plate by peeling up the fabric that is glued to the top edge of the bulkhead. Then, lift the block off plate out of the chassis. This will not be reinstalled. Next, loosen the jam nut on the exhaust valve servo motor cable and disconnect the cable from the servo motor. Then unbolt the exhaust valve servo from the chassis using a T30 torque bit. To remove the wiring plug from the servo motor, squeeze the white safety clip towards the wiring harness and lift the connector off to disconnect. Clip the two zip ties holding the exhaust valve servo motor wires coming from the fuse box. Remove the fuse box from the fuse box bracket by lifting up on the black safety tab and sliding the fuse box toward the center of the sled. Remove the fuse box mounting bracket from the bulkhead cross member by drilling out the rivets using a 3 16 drill bit. The stock fuse box mounting bracket will not be reinstalled. Remove Y-pipe by removing Allen bolts using a 5-inch long 6mm ball end Allen wrench. Clean away any residue left by the stock exhaust gasket. Mark the nose pan as shown in illustration 5 using a silver marker. Then trim the marked area from the nose pan using a Dremel tool with a plastic cutting rotary bit. Deeper as necessary. Remove the foam from inside the belly pan. Then remove the front bolt from the belly pan support bracket and swing the bracket toward the engine. Locate the insulated heat blankets included in the parts kit. Dry fit the blankets into place by aligning it to the contour of the belly pan before pulling off the backer. Center the bottom blanket and mark its location using a marker. Remove the backer and apply to the belly pan working from the center out. Do the same with the upper blanket. The upper blanket will overlap the lower blanket slightly. Apply the supplied reflective heat tape to the sides of the belly pan as shown. Then reinstall the belly pan support bracket. Apply a strip of insulated heat tape on the mag side of the upper bulkhead support. Then cover the support with the reflective heat tape. Apply heat tape near the exhaust outlet of the belly pan as we show here. Install the provided spring clip in the 1 o'clock position using the provided 8 by one25 by 20 mm bolt with a dab of blue thread locker on the threads. Using a T40 Torx, remove the front bolt on the mag side rear chassis support and swing down but do not remove.
Unbolt the upper steering arm heim joint, then install the provided aluminum straight cut SLP spacer and provided locking nut, then torque to 37 foot pounds. Remove the bolt on the back of the front bumper on the PTO side where the brown wires are attached. Install the provided SLP fuse box relocation bracket onto the rear end side of the front bumper using the OEM bumper bolt and nut in the rear of the SLP fuse bracket. Then use the provided self-tapping bolt in the front hole of the mounting bracket. Make sure the bracket is flush with the bottom edge of the bumper and the exhaust servo control wire is forward. Heat tape the fuse box side closest to the pipe as shown here. Slip one provided heat sleeve over the exhaust valve control wire and the other provided heat sleeve over the exhaust valve servo cable. Using the provided stainless steel template as shown here, mark the hole on the bulkhead for relocating the exhaust valve servo. Drill the hole using a 1 4th inch drill bit. Remove the servo motor from the servo mounting bracket. Install the provided beveled spacer with the beveled edge toward the bulkhead between the mounting bracket and the bulkhead, using the provided 6x1x20 mm flanged bolt coming from the engine side. Snug the bolt finger tight into the bracket. Rotate the bracket toward the belly pan until the bottom of the bracket pushes against the belly pan and stops the rotation with only light pressure applied. Mark the bottom hole location using a centering punch. Rotate the bracket out of the way to check the marked position. It should be approximately 0.35 inches from the belly pan transition line shown here. Drill the marked hole using a 1 4th inch drill bit. Rotate the bracket back into place and install the provided 6x1x16 mm flange bolt finger tight from the outside of the belly pan. Mark the middle hole using a centering punch. Remove the servo motor bracket and drill the middle hole using a 1 4th inch drill bit. Attach the exhaust valve actuator cable to the servo motor. Then. Reattach the servo motor using the stock screws. Reinstall the servo motor assembly in the new location, beginning with the top hole, only finger tight at this time, and making sure to install the beveled spacer between the bulkhead and the bracket. Also be sure to use blue Loctite on the threads. Route the servo motor wiring harness around the back side of the servo motor bracket between the two upper holes. Plug the connector into the socket and lock into place by pushing the white clip toward the servo motor. Slide the heat sleeve over the connector and zip tie it into place. Apply blue Loctite to the threads of the middle and lower servo bracket bolts and install. Tighten all servo motor mounting bolts at this time. Using the three holes that originally held the exhaust valve servo onto the bulkhead, Install the provided SLP pipe support bracket. Use the two supplied 6x1x20 mm bolts in the upper holes and one supplied 6x1x16 mm bolt in the lower hole. They also use the supplied 6x1 mm nylock nuts. At this point, if you've also purchased an SLP torque arm, this point in the instructions is where you should install that. See the specific installation instructions for the SLP torque arm to complete this process. Install the PTO flange side and gasket with the flange angling toward the mag side. Torque bolts to 22 foot-pounds. If you are having a difficult time telling the flanges apart, the PTO flange is the shorter flange that is angled. The V-shaped support that is welded to the flange points down. Install the provided graph oil seal onto the PTO flange. 
route the EGT sensor behind the fuse box. Set the PTO pipe into the chassis, but do not connect it to the flange. Install the EGT sensor into the pipe using anti-seize on the threads of the sensor and torque to 22 foot-pounds. Then install the PTO pipe. Make sure the pipe stud slides into the pipe support bracket, as shown here. If you are having difficulty with this step, apply WD-40 or a similar lubricant to the pipe prior to inserting it into the support bracket. Spring the PTO pipe into place using the provided SLP silicone filled springs. When springing the PTO pipe into place, come in through the PTO side below the clutch cover. Using an SLP heavy duty long spring hook tool makes this process much easier. Install the mag side flange pointing forward. Then, install the mag side pipe. Make sure the pipe stud slides into the pipe support bracket. The mag flange is the longer, straight flange. The V-shaped support that is welded onto the flange points down. As we mentioned before, if you're having difficulty installing the pipe, apply WD-40 or a similar lubricant prior to inserting the pipe into the support bracket. Spring the mag pipe into place using the provided SLP silicone filled springs. Reinstall the rear chassis support that we unbolted in step 11. Once both pipes are installed, test fit the silencer and stinger assembly in place. Check the clearance between the silencer bracket and the rear shock tower support member. Due to chassis variation, this distance will vary. Most sleds will only need the supplied orange silicone vibration damper installed to take up this space, but some will need one, two, or three fender washers behind the orange damper for proper fitment. Rivet the orange damper with any necessary fender washers behind it onto the silencer bracket using the supplied large head rivet. Install the silencer and spring into place using the OEM gold colored short spring to the lower spring clip an OEM medium spring to hold the upper portion of the silencer in place. Install silencer EGT sensor using provided anti-seize on the threads of the sensor and torque to 22 foot-pounds. The OEM zip tie holding the sensor wire in place will have to be removed and the sensor wire needs to be routed to the front side of the coolant bottle, as shown here. Zip tie the wire to the coolant bottle after the sensor has been torqued in place. Install the stinger assembly into the pipe and silencer. Make sure to use ultra black high temp silicone between all ball and socket joints. Use two silver colored OEM springs between the pipe and the stinger assembly and two gold colored OEM springs between the silencer and stinger assembly. Zip tie the gauge and dash wiring harness back into place using the zip tie provided. Check for clearance between the mag pipe and the mag side overstructure. There should be at least 1 4th inch of clearance. Check for clearance between the PTO pipe and the exhaust valve cable. There should be at least 1 4th inch of clearance. Turn the handlebars fully in each direction and check the clearance between the PTO pipe and the upper steering arm heim joint retaining nut. There should be at least 1 8th inch of clearance. Next, start the sled and check for any exhaust leaks. Remove the foam from the front center underside panel of the hood. Cover this area with the provided reflective heat tape. Using the SLP reflash box, connect to the diagnostic port in the wiring harness located on the PTO side above the clutch cover, and reflash the ECU to the SLP twin pipe map. You will also need to re-clutch to SLP clutching recommendations, seen on page 8 of your instruction sheet. Finally, reinstall the hood and side panels onto your sled. Thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, feel free to call us at 208-529-0244 or emailing us at slp at slp.cc.